Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Max Albee and welcome to my first video for the Binghamton Evo Seminar Series. This video is about the cultural evolution of mural painting. But what's the relationship between mural painting and biological evolution? Cultural evolution is an important evolutionary process as Dr. David Wilson explains here. Uh, the human capacity for cultural change, cultural evolution, is an evolutionary process. Uh, different in some respects, but, uh, but also similar to uh, the process of genetic evolution. And so just about everything we say about genetic evolution with regard to the four questions also holds for uh, cultural evolution. I'm going to use Nico Tinbergen's famous four questions, first introduced in 1963, as a framework for looking at this evolutionary process. These questions typically apply to a physical or behavioral trait in various species. They are, number one, what is the function of the trait? Number two, what is the mechanism of the trait? Number three, how does the trait develop within one's lifetime? And finally, number four, what is the long-term evolutionary history of the trait or its phylogeny? So how does the cultural evolution of mural painting look through the perspective of Tim Bergen's four questions? Well, first let's look at the function of mural painting. Dating back to up to 40,000 years ago, humans painted on walls to communicate their experience. Although the function of mural painting has surely evolved since prehistoric drawings of animals and stencils of hands, the function of mural painting, as it thankfully exists today, is still as a communication tool. Since murals are usually painted on large walls in public spaces, they lend themselves to the function of communication to a large public audience. The cave art of Altamira in northern Spain depicting, among other things, bison, communicates a likely food source of importance at the time. The Maya murals found in Bonampak, in what is now southern Mexico, function today as an extremely valuable communication tool, depicting in great detail the life, society, politics, and culture of this ancient society. Tim Bergen's second question, what are the mechanisms of mural painting, and how do the mechanisms and technology influence its evolution? The Bonampak murals, as well as the Great Sistine Chapel by Michelangelo, were painted directly onto wet plaster in the technique known as alfresco. This mechanism, or technique, greatly preserves the paint as it becomes part of the wall, not just a layer on the surface. The fresco technique was brought back into modern mural painting by the three great Mexican muralists, Diego Rivera, David Siqueiros, and Jose Clemente Orozco. Murals today have evolved from the very slow and delicate process of fresco to the quickly painted murals using highly developed spray paint available in glorious array of color choices. This recent development in spray can technology and availability in the last 20 years shows a rapid development in the cultural evolution of mural painting. Which brings us to Tim Bergen's final two questions related to development in short term or development in one's lifespan and in the long term phylogeny of the trait, meaning the evolutionary history over a long period of time. I've personally seen mural painting develop just in my short lifetime, not just in the mechanism, but in the cultural value in what's known as street art, a cultural cousin of 1970s and 80s graffiti art that has been rapidly transforming urban walls and neighborhoods across the world. The long-term perspective of murals shows a slower evolution in the sense that, just as our ancestors applied pigment to walls to communicate their life experience, modern muralists still apply pigment to walls to communicate our current experience. Although our ability to communicate has evolved greatly through digital technology, mural painting still, and maybe more than ever, is a valuable cultural tool. It has yet to be eliminated.